To shoot astrophotography, you need a camera, a tripod, a wide angle fast lens, a clear night, that really does help, a place with low light pollution, no or small moon. <laughs> small moon? A new moon, a new moon, no moon, moon bad. The moon just makes all the stars disappear. So pick a time of the month where there is no moon. A star app on your phone really can help so you can point in the right direction. There's tons of free versions available on both Android and Apple. A light, so you can see what you're doing because this happens at night. Bear in mind if you use a traditional light you will lose your night vision very quickly. So a red light is sometimes worth investing in. Or if you're a cheapskate like me just wait until your eyes adjust. And another light to illuminate anything that's happening in the foreground is always a good idea because your foreground interest, as I've learnt to my detriment, as you'll see in some of these images, your foreground is often something that you'll forget during astrophotography because you're looking up at the stars and making sure you've got that right. You often forget to expose a frame for your foreground. So if you use a light, I use the one on my phone and just sort of paint during a long exposure to sort of bring out the foreground. Very handy. Most people have a light on the phone. Very easy to do, just don't forget. And a calculator or any basic rudimentary knowledge of maths, which I don't possess, so I use the calculator. And I'll tell you why for all of these things now. The reason that you need a wide angle lens, I have used sort of 8mm or 7.5mm, so around the 15mm in, in full frame terms, is there is something called the 500 rule when it comes to astrophotography. This is the equation that you use to make sure you use the right sort of shutter speed, exposure time, before the stars begin to blur and move because the Earth is moving. And the longer you leave your shutter open for, the more you will see the, the stars drift. So we don't want that most of the time, unless you're doing star trails, then you do want that. But for standard astrophotography, you just have to figure out the full frame equivalent of your lens. So if you were shooting 25mm, it would be a 50mm in full frame. If you're shooting a 7.5mm, it would be 15mm in full frame. And then divide that number by 500. The other aspect of your lens choice, aside from it being wide, is preferably being pretty fast. 2.8 or higher. Higher is better, but also more expensive. So I'm using a 2.8 lens. Just because the, the wider the aperture, the more light you get in, the more information you get. Just like any other aspect of photography. In terms of ISO, this is where the Micro Four Thirds cameras can sometimes get a little bit tricky. You want that as high as possible. I dabble <laughs> around 5,000 ISO. Uh, you might have sort of better results higher or lower. If you were using a full frame camera, you could probably ram it up to 10,000 or more. But 5,000 ISO with a little bit of editing and a few techniques can get you very, very good results on Micro Four Thirds. So just a quick recap, fast wide lens, figure out your right shutter speed, use a high ISO, as high as you dare. And then we're ready to go. Stick your camera on your tripod and then figure out which way you want to point your camera. Now to find the Milky Way, as I say, you can either, if it's a very clear night, you can just about make it out with your eyes. When I went to Arizona, a place called Marble Canyon, you could see the Milky Way with your naked eyes. It was so cool, but I didn't have my tripod. So I only have a mental picture to prove it. Uh, when I was in Wales for New Year, you could actually make out the strip of the Milky Way very faintly with the naked eye. So I didn't need to use the app, I could just sort of figure out where it was and off we go. If it isn't quite as pronounced in the sky when you try this, then use the app. The, the app you can use augmented reality. This is me demonstrating augmented reality. You just wander around and figure out where it is and then compose your shot. There's two schools of thought on camera noise reduction. If you are just going to use a single frame and doing minimal editing, you probably want to keep the camera in camera noise reduction on. If you're going to stack your images in post and do a bit of work with them, I would recommend turning them off. So now it comes to getting the correct sort of exposures 
for the results that you want when you finished editing. And there are a few ways to go about this. As I mentioned, the easiest way is if you're just doing one exposure, probably keep your noise reduction on in camera, set your camera up, if you have an interesting foreground, it would be a great opportunity to light paint the foreground so that you, you've got something interesting and you don't have to pull out the shadows and make the foreground really noisy. And then just hope for the best and, and get as much information that you can in that one frame. So one, make sure you take a photograph with your foreground in mind. Don't just concentrate on the stars because if you have the greatest stars in the world and your foreground is noisy and horrible, it's a bad image. Light painting is your friend. Two, if it's a cold night, stick a battery in your bra or an inside pocket. You will go through your battery quite quickly in the dark, in the cold, so keep your batteries warm to preserve battery life. Preserve your night vision. The GH5 actually has a red screen mode, which is awesome. Uh, a lot of the star tracking apps will have a red mode because they know that you're going to be outside at night using it. If you have a red camping light, like a headlight or whatever, use the red light because the red light keeps your night vision. If you don't have access to a red light, just wait until your eyes have adjusted and hope for the best. Don't do what I did in Wales, which was walk out in the dark and I was in awe of the stars and walked straight into the picnic bench. <laughs> I got like a bruise on my shin the size of a golf ball. So don't do what Emily does. A lot of this channel, in fact, is just don't do what I do. Learn from my mistakes. <laughs>